How many of you have been in a situation, again, where you've learned information was valuable, you're excited about it, and you didn't follow through, and it wasn't because you weren't interested, it was because you were overwhelmed? Who's been there before? Raise your hand and say, I. I. We want to help you to change that. The way you change that is by learning one simple skill. It's a skill you already have, but you may not be using it to its maximum ability. And tonight, rather than teach you the whole skill, let's just point it out. And the skill is called chunking. Chunking is the understanding that when you're first learning something, that something feels like many things. Case in point, you're gonna learn to drive a stick shift car and you're brand new at driving a car. Who can remember this experience? And was it overwhelming, yes or no? Why? Because driving a car today for most of you is one chunk of information. I'm gonna go drive, that's it. Because most of what you've done, you've got cognitive knowledge about, you repeated it enough with enough emotion, you did it enough in your body, now all of those complex things happen and what you call it is just driving. But the first time you were driving, it was a lot of different activities. I can remember, they called me speed racer because I couldn't figure out how to get anything going. I got in the car, you know, okay, I accelerate or brake, got that, watch the road, and I'm supposed to do this too? <laughs> and watch the rear view mirror? No, 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 they, this ain't happening, right? Because it was overwhelming. Because what it was, was one chunk of you was figuring out how to accelerate, one part of you break, another part of you's gotta watch the road, another one's watching the rear view mirror, another one's gotta figure out the timing of moving this in. But after a while, it just became driving. And most of you drive today, literally, on automatic pilot. Because many of you, how many of you have ever done this? You're driving along, and all of a sudden, your mind goes somewhere else, and all of a sudden you go, who's been driving? <laughs> who's had that experience before? Say, I. I. Well, who's been driving is your subconscious mind. The part of you that makes your heart beat 100,000 times a day without you having to think about it even when you're sleeping. And your subconscious absorbs way more when you're in a position of total absorption like you are here. Immersion. More than your conscious mind does. But what will make you confident and help you is if you can design a few triggers or a few ways to take all this mass stuff and break it into the way most people learn. Most people think one, two, three, many. They get past three chunks and they get a bit overwhelmed. So we have these seven tools that we're giving you, these seven pillars. The first one we spent the morning on was this concept of taking stock. And there are these five questions. That's the first pillar. Once that's in place, now we focus on the second one, innovation and marketing, which we're going to touch on tomorrow and we touch a little bit on today. Then we go to the third one. It's strategies versus tactics. It's a bit of, you know, what is this education marketing? It's all the things you're starting to learn right now that can give you a huge competitive advantage. How many agree the content you just learned could give you a huge advantage, implement it. How many would agree with that? Say aye. aye. I'm in the business of, uh, of empowering men to uh, help uh, make their women happy and fill their needs of, uh, for joy and uh, love by selling Or them. you sell diamonds? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I also I empower diamonds. women to make themselves feel beautiful too. You can do it on your own. My question is, how do I get more people to... Uh, to call for help. Well, first of all, I wouldn't want more people. I would want more of the right people. The right people. People so, who are either thinking now or will be thinking about buying a diamond. Because people don't wake up one morning and say, I'm getting engaged, I'm buying a diamond. They, they give some thought to it, the process, and they do okay. research. So who is the best of those people? Because there are lots of people that could be thinking about buying a diamond. I'd like to get a gold grill and have a diamond right there just to be classy. So, you know, people who are playing. it is pretty classy. People who are planning to get engaged or who are having anniversaries or don't want to upgrade a diamond, those are the people who Which are of those three is the most desirable to you? Well, not necessarily the people who can spend the most because that's not where necessarily the highest profit margin is, but the people who are currently thinking about getting engaged and need help. Okay. So I would start immediately by only focusing on those with the campaign we're, we're talking about specifically. Well, I generate leads online. I don't have a shopping cart. I don't believe in it. I, don't I, th I think you're it. right, by they the way. I think it's a me. smart call. I think that's a very good decision. Because, I mean, I would be sketched out if I had a diamond on the interwebs, you know. But anyway, so if that's what you're after, if you're after those dudes, I would find a way to reach just those guys. I'm confident that when I get them to call me, I'll close them. So really, the, the question the should be, how do I get them to call me? Right? Yeah. 
So what, what's, why, the, what's the offer that would be powerful enough to get them to make that call? Because there's that's the other what piece I'm trying that you to figure out. I want to point out that was so critical, guys. I'm listening mm -hmm. in, a, in an hour's conversation. You're not going to remember everything. But one of those pieces are you didn't have to be a great marketer if you have the right what? Offer. Well, I'm, I'm, in addition to sending them the report, I'm offering them, let's say, a 5% discount on any piece of diamond jewelry that they'll buy mm -hmm. or a 10% discount on an engagement ring setting or wedding band if they buy the loose diamond from me as well. So that's How what about, I'm working so right now. If you, if you want them to call you, so you're trying to make the sale, you're trying to get the commitment of, for them to raise their hand as a buyer in the print, in the media, in the email. Right, and that's very difficult. You're, it's proving to be very difficult, right? Yes. So I would shift the offer to be like, look, I don't care when you're going to get married, but I'm feeling really, really generous right now, and marriage is a beautiful thing, and it's lovely, and uh, blah, 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 whatever. You know? <laughs> that didn't sound right, but you know what I mean? <laughs> if you call today, I will give you X discount whenever you choose to buy your diamond, because chances are, when they call you, they're already ready to buy the diamond, but they're being scared off by the 10% discount today because they're thinking, well, I'm going to have to buy today. But if you remove that pressure and you remove that fear, it gives them permission to call without that. Does that make sense? It does. It allows me to... Actually, I, it's any time. My offer is not limited to if they call today. So give them a reason but to I call can make it. I can make it clearer mm -hmm. that their offer is whenever they call. Yeah, so give them or a reason... Or even if like, they have a friend call who mentions their name. Well, we need to be very specific in the me. marketing, though. We need to be very specific. Call by X, and I will give you X discount plus X cool stuff anytime you ever buy a diamond from me. And if you buy, here's an irresistible offer. If you buy a diamond from a competitor, that's okay. I will send you as a congratulatory gift a gold chain for your wife to wear on her wrist on her wedding day, just as my show of appreciation for your thanks in calling me. How many, how many see the difference here? The secret, though, to this only works if, when you get that person, you can truly what? Convert. You've got to deliver. If you can really deliver, you can make these offers. The very thing we did the other day. We made the offer. We just make it more and more and more compelling because you know you're going to deliver. And when you get that, that's how you stand out from anybody else, and that's how you get the phone ringing. Well, humbly, I, I, I deliver. Delivery is not my problem. Right. It's figuring out what the irresistible offer has to be and how to... But, but how do you figure? How does anybody figure that out? By the way, Frank's going to go away. I'll go away. Everybody's going to go away. How are you going to find the most irresistible offer? How? Well, you do is test. But the first thing is you just brainstorm and find somebody before you even test anywhere else and say, "Would this make you call?" How many would pick up the phone for a five to ten percent discount? Raise your hand. One person out of a thousand out of nine hundred. How many pick up the phone if I can get a ten percent discount forever? Just out of curiosity, anytime. See if that does it. How many pick up the phone if you say, listen, I'll evaluate any other diamond you have and I'll beat the price or I'll send you a gold bracelet for your lady at some stage. Let me see a show of hands. <laughs> Which, by the way, we just added something. Evaluate any other diamond you're putting out there. So now I've got a trusted expert who, if they don't deliver for me, I get something no matter what. And we just got 90% of the room to raise their hand. All we change, how much does that cost, by the way, to make that change in his business? Zero. Changing an offer costs nothing. This is where you make a thousand, ten thousand percent chance. We're talking about optimizing, right? This optimization is the part to go from leads to people that actually engage with you, right? The equivalent of the appointment or having the meaningful conversation. So all you've got to do is start to say, guys, I can change my business 500%, 1,000%, 30%, 40%. But what I understand is the greatest investment I've got is the X factor of my intelligence, my creativity, my sitting down and brainstorming. You don't have to be the genius to do it. You can go hire somebody like Frank and bring somebody in to do it, or you can just sit down and go, you know what? I'm going to stop being a goddamn business operator who's running like crazy in my business. I'm going to step out and be the business owner and go, what will produce this result? That was the goal of these five days.